Hello everyone. In following presentation, we are going to see EEG-based polysomnography for sleep studies. I am going to explain you what different kind of signals we measure and how we can use these signals to diagnose different sleep disorders or any other disorders. And I also hope that you don't feel sleepy while I am explaining you this. So let's jump into the main topic. So etymologically, polysomnography has three roots. First is a polis, means many. Somnus means uh, sleep. And the graphene means to write. So basically we are writing many signals while we are asleep. So in polysomnography, we record many signals and then try to study them collectively in order to understand sleep and the processes which occur while we are asleep. So first of all, we want to see why sleep is important and then we want to see why polysomnography is important. A uh, normal adult will spend one third of the daytime in sleep. So that's a big chunk of our daily lives. And sleep is not very simple process. It has lots of dynamics. Many activities change while we are asleep, especially heart rate, uh, respiratory rate muscle activity and activities in brain. Understanding these processes quantitatively helps us understand many things. And first thing is sleep disorders. Uh, sleep disorders have two types. First is a neurological disorder like periodic limb movement uh, where a person involuntarily moves his or her limb uh, while they are asleep or sleep apnea which is like abrupt breathing patterns while person is asleep narcolepsy which is abrupt sleep while person is awake so he might fall asleep when he's talking to someone and it really hinders the daily work of that person when there is idiopathic hypersomnia which is daytime sleepiness and it's generally results in lower quality of life. There are other psychiatric disorders like somnambulism, which is sleepwalking and schizophrenia and depression. Also, we can use polysomnography to understand how a healthy person is sleeping and improve their quality of sleep and then improving their quality of life. And it's also used sometimes as a legal evidence in cases of homicidal somnambulism so basically people hurt other people while they are asleep and they don't know so polysomnography can be used as evidence to prove their innocence so we have established why this is important and now we will see how it's done and what type of signals are used to do polysomnography so now we are in interesting part of polysomnography and following signals are recorded in a typical polysomnography. First is EEG, which records brain activity. EOG, which is electrooculogram, which records activity of eyes. And we will shortly see why recording EOG is important. We record EMG to see the muscle activity. And we just discussed there is a periodic limb movement disorder. So EMG can be used to diagnose these kind of disorders. We record ECG to see how heart is working and whether there are any abrupt uh, conditions occurring while we are asleep. We record respiratory rates basically from nasal and chest in order to understand how the breathing is functioning. As we just discussed there is sleep apnea which is abrupt breathing patterns while we are asleep. So the respiratory monitoring really helps to understand those kind of diseases. Along with ECG, we also want to monitor the blood pressure. So the blood pressure goes through many changes while we are asleep. And especially it's very low when we are into deep sleep, as we will see what are the different type of sleeps shortly. Following is just a sample of how a typical polysomnograph looks. So we have ECG, blood pressure, 
EEG, nasal respiratory, chest respiratory, EOG, and finally EMG. Okay, so now we understood all the tools which we are going to use to analyze the sleep. Now we will see what are the different type of sleep. So a normal sleep is divided in five stages or five different types, so to say. So first is non-REM sleep. So when we fall asleep, initially we are in NREM stage one, then we move to stage two. And these two stages are called light sleep and we can uh, be awake from that stages easily. After that we go to a deep sleep which is uh, stage 3 and 4. After this completes we go to a rapid eye movement stage where our brain activity is almost like uh, what it is when we are awake but we are still asleep or half awaken we can say because the brain activity is very high and our eyes move rapidly that's why they have called termed it as rapid eye movement stage and this cycle uh, continues at least four to five times during a sleep and each cycle has time of about 90 to 100 p minutes as we will see on next slide so this is how a typical sleep pattern looks like uh, it's about period of seven hours so first we are awake at uh, zero tower then we go to stage one then stage two stage three and four which are deep sleep and then we gradually move back from stage four to uh, stage one and then we have a brief REM sleep period and this cycle repeats but as we go ahead in time uh, the stage 3 and 4 are skipped and we have more REM sleep towards the um, end of our sleep and REM, is, REM sleep is a time period when we see dreams so we generally see dreams early in morning when we are completing our sleep and we are at third or fourth cycle of sleep also we can look at the EEG recordings for different stages so initially when we are awake we have all kind of mixed signals then in stage one we have very low activity then in stage two the amplitude increases and the frequency decreases and in stage 3 and 4 we have very high amplitude of EEG signals and at very lower frequencies. Uh, the REM sleep EEG recordings are almost similar to EEG recordings when we are awake. And let's see some other uh, signals also. And now we will see how EOG and EMG works. So basically when we are awake our eyes are moving so there is a signal in EOG and also in REM stage because it's rapid eye movement stage so at that time probably we are dreaming and we are moving our eyeballs in NREM the eye movement is very low so the EOG signal is very low as compared to REM or awake sleep and for EMG signal when we are awake the EMG signal has high amplitude and also in NREM stage because we are moving our uh, body parts somewhat while we are adjusting uh, but in REM stage we don't have any EMG signal because this can be dangerous while we are dreaming uh, we may move our hands or legs rapidly which may hurt ourselves so in REM stage we don't have any EMG signals so this is one uh, factor which can uh, discriminate awake stage and REM stage because uh, in REM stage the EMG signals are not present now we will see how heart rate and blood pressure change during different stages of sleep 
so as compared to heart rate and blood pressure when we are awake the stage 1 2 3 and 4 of nrem sleep has slightly lower of these readings but in rem stage we have almost similar readings of heart rate and blood pressure one more thing to note about heart rate is that it is very irregular in REM sleep and so is the blood pressure. Generally speaking the respiratory rate and heart rate are correlated but they behave slightly differently in sleep. So in REM and awakened state the breathing rate is quite variable but in uh, NREM state the breathing rate is quite stable and it doesn't change and it's also a bit lower than uh, uh, the respiratory rate when we are awake or in REM sleep and also the uh, volume of the breath which we take changes in NREM and REM sleep or awake states. So we have seen how all the signals which we record work in polysomnography and now let's look at how we can use this data to diagnose different disorders and to analyze sleep conditions. So in diagnosis first is periodic limb movement disorder. So in periodic limb movement disorder we measure the EMG signal um, and it typically has uh, 20 to 40 second interval between each excitation of leg or head muscles. So this is very easily detectable disease or condition. And let's see sleep apnea. So we had uh, we have irregular breathing cycles. Uh, and it has short episodes of several seconds so if we don't monitor the respiratory rate and try to correlate it just by using heart rate then we will not be able to detect the sleep apnea uh, and we generally use two respiratory rate monitors one is a nasal monitor and other is a chest uh, bound respiratory rate monitor the third one is narcolepsy where a person sleeps abruptly during the daytime so this is a bit difficult to monitor because we need to have a mobile polysomnography machine so which records the EEG signals continuously in normal day-to-day -day routine of a person or maybe in lab settings for a certain period of time so we can detect these narcolepsy attacks uh, easily because the EEG signal changes mm, drastically between awake state and stage 1 of the NREM sleep where it has very low ampli amplitude. And the last one is idiopathic hypersomnia. So this is a daytime sleepiness syndrome and this is generally difficult to diagnose and what happens in this uh, is that a person has a short sleep latency that means it takes less time for the person with idiopathic hypersomnia to reach stage 3 and 4 of NREM sleep from awake state. Second characteristic is increased mean slow wave sleep that means slow wave sleep is basically stage 3 and 4 of NREM sleep and generally a person with this uh, condition spends more time in stage 3 and 4 of sleep and it has a high mean sleep efficiency so in simple word what it means is that uh, a person with this uh, condition sleeps more than average as compared to other healthy uh, adults so this is how we do diagnosis of some of the disease and it can also be used to prove that a person has a somnambulism or a sleepwalking. So what happens is that we measure the EMG signals 
and we can physically see that person is moving but the EEG signal of the person shows that it is in NREM sleep stage so that we can prove that this person is doing this action involuntarily and finally polysomnography can also be used to measure the quality of sleep of healthy person and uh, try to improve the quality of sleep and quality of life to conclude i would say that polysomnography is uh, very high potential in research and diagnosis uh, researchers are using it to diagnose schizophrenia and depression and other kind of uh, mental disorders if you have any question please email me at a given email address or you can ask me a question whenever i meet you in class so thank you